Hi, I'm Alexa Alamano, and I own Foamy Waiter Jewelry, which is where we are. It's my jewelry shop here in Seattle. I have my studio in the back, and I'm going to give you guys a tour today. Foamy Waiter originally was a nickname I picked up when I was 18 or so. Going wading in a fountain, there'd been soap bombs, so it was just overflowing with foam, so foamy wading. But then as I started making jewelry, I noticed that my style was all nautical and bubbly and playful, so the name sort of fed one another. My studio at the house was tiny. It was about 110 square feet, which is half the size of the room we're in right now, and was just crammed with any and everything, show displays and tools, and I was just limited to what I could even create out of that space. And the opportunity to have a showroom as well as a studio was just too good to pass up. And this is my wall of all nautical artwork, kind of a general inspiration area. I want to sit down and have time to think about all of the nautical things. Anchors and boats, things that my friends have made, things I've just found and liked. This was my husband made it when he was in elementary school and he pinned it up in my office back in the day when it was at my house when I was away for a trip. I was like, I got you some new artwork. So that's particularly fond of that one. The most sentimental pieces for me are all the ones that either my friends made or my husband made. He made this for me for my last birthday, which is all my favorite things with unicorn horns on them. Narwhal, pug, anchor, tiny bottles. And it I, made me laugh and cry for several minutes when I opened it. So if, I, if the studio were on fire, I would take this. This would be the one thing I would grab. And sitting above my workstation, I made all small wire work pieces. That's how I taught myself how to make jewelry, was just looking at really simplistic designs and trying to sort out how a wire wrap was made. And as I worked, I liked that I liked things just tinier and tinier, the smaller and smaller details, just like a little bit of color, a little hammered texture, just something really petite. It was just what I was inspired to keep making. So moving on to the heavier stations, this is a 10 ton hydraulic press which I bought specially to make the nautical flag necklaces. So you could spell out words or names, initials in nautical flag code. You take your steel stamp with your image that you're gonna press into the metal and you make a little sandwich with your metal as the filling, the delicious filling of sandwich. Sandwich it in between the press and your steel block and use the pump to engage the press down onto your seal stamp. So then once it makes contact, you're gonna see the dial actually move up as you press it further. Longer. So you get a few pumps in and it's pretty simple. And then it gets that you have to kind of use your whole body to press it down. That's 10 tons of pressure and let it sit for a minute and then disengage the pressure. So you take it out and you've made a nice impression in your metal. This would be the letter J. Next to uh, the hydraulic press, this is my normal torch work station. This is where any firing happens, soldering and annealing metal. All these little compartments are full of varied tools. And most of the equipment that we've outfitted the shop and the studio with, we try to get secondhand reuse. And this is my hammering station. So I do all my forging, texturing metal, shaping. My tiny name necklace is the most popular thing. So I spend most of my time stamping tiny, tiny names on little bars right here. And next to this bench is all my treasure chests of gems. This is all the earlier colors in the rainbow, white to green in this bin. These are boxes of gem specimen that came from my grandfather, my great grandfather. So I get to decorate the shop with little trinkets and treasures from the earth that my grandfather and great grandfather sourced. So pretty neat. And this is a picture of my grandfather. He was a gem cutter. He's a lapidary and he did it as an exercise for muscle control because he had Parkinson's. And this is me when I was about four years old, just enthralled in his gem cutting. And he's also a sailor and lived on a boat with my grandmother for years. So there's plenty of inspiration coming from him in my life. 
And then the last wall in the studio is all inspiration, display, bits and pieces, things I've collected to make great little window displays or photography elements, giving it a nice little character, nautical feel, vibe. You can find all kinds of bits and bobs, display, little trays, seashells, a little nautical-ish pillow. Just the most fun things to go antique hunting for. I just love that there's tiny little bits of history, like somebody took the time to keep this little itty bitty ring box and pass it down. And I have no idea who they are or where they're from. I just love it. Little bits of history. Gems are all millions of years old. They're remnants of history from the earth. They're just fascinating. My husband likes to say I opened a shop so that I could just continue buying tiny bottles forever and I'm fine with that. Thanks for coming to Foamy Waiter today. You can find us in Seattle on Northeast 55th Street or online at foamywaiter.com.